Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes. These books talk about every week I speak to various authors who are behind life transforming books as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on the station this and every Saturday at 4:30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Hello and welcome to the Writer's Blog Talk Show right here on this channel. It's always a joy to come your way. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia. It is a book review show designed to celebrate authors, Ghanaian authors, and promote their works. Today, I'm honored to have a very great man I've admired for a very long time, Uncle Abel White. Uh, we are going to discuss from his book, Let's Talk About Sex. This today's edition uh, is something that I'm going to indulge you as a parent as you're watching us uh, to excuse your children rated 18 and above. We want to talk about sex as it is and how uh, a blessing or a case it is uh, for us here. Remember we are coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel right here in Accra. Serene environment. Remember it's a new month. Happy new month to you. It is our love month and so if you're looking for that one place uh, to spend that special moment with you uh, and your special someone you need to be here get here and you will be blessed remember it is also supported by holy ever after broad advertising challenge enterprises of ghana Aco books audio anya do and of course our media partners sunny fm and sunny tv we take a quick break we'll be back in just a bit stay with us Cody's Fashion and Makeover is a one-stop shop for all your beauty needs. Our services include makeup, nail art, pedicure, manicure, braids, wake up, hair styling, and so much more. Our fashion outlet churns out a trendy unisex African print designs for every occasion. So go on and wear Africa, wear Ghana. Locate us at Second Link Chapel Square, Sakomono. Contact us on 0545-988-607 or 0302-985-409 or 0504-227-113 at Cody's Fashion and Makeover Styling you you is our hobby. Aku Books Audio makes African books accessible and available to everyone, anytime, anywhere, on a wide variety of mobile devices, including computers, tablets, and of course, mobile phones. My name's Emma Dadson, and I'm founder of Aku Books Audio, a digital streaming platform, an African spoken word experience provider. We transform African books into exciting and engaging audio experiences that make reading affordable, convenient, and fun. We offer readers a library of top-notch African authors and literary voice talent through listening to audiobooks and audio programming. With over 300 titles in over 20 categories, including fiction, biographies, and children's books, we aim to be the world's largest African audio digital library promoting audio literacy in English, French, and African languages. Asante from Anyedu, 
Anyadu is a children's company, a multimedia children's company that wants to help parents to raise successful and blessed kids. We believe that all children have potential and it has to be unleashed. So we are helping parents to unleash this potential and especially for us as Africans, we believe that this is our time, this is when we can make an impact in this world. We want to raise a new generation of strong, confident, bold um, African children who would change the world, change the narrative of an African in the world. We are starting from Ghana, we are hoping that we will be able to reach the whole of Africa and let the children know that, look, they can do anything that they want to do because through Christ all things are possible. Say I love you. Create memories worth repeating this Valentine's Day by treating your heart to a special three-course meal facing the Atlantic Ocean. La Pan Royal Beach Hotel invites you to a special pungent moment with your love as we treat you with delectable cuisine. From Friday, 11 February to Tuesday, 15 February 2022. Room rate, double occupancy, $140. Single occupancy, $115. Date, 14 February 2022. Dinner, venue, Ocean View Ghanaian Village Restaurant. Rate, 390 per couple and 230 for single. Time, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. There is complimentary house wine and lots of gifts available. For reservations and inquiry, please call 0302-215-100 or 0577-665-964. La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. Welcome back. It is the Writer's Blog Talk Show. Remember, we're coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel here in Accra. Our quote for today, I'm taking it from uh, my guest book, Uncle Bo White's book, Let's Talk About Sex. This one is by Marge Piercy. It says, it's not sex that gives pleasure, but the lover. Beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Um, and then uh, we're going to get to talk to this great man of God. Um, you know, find out why, <laughs> amongst all the various things he's ever really written about or talked about, why sex? Why sex? <laughs> Hello, Uncle Ibu. Hi, Vicky. Um, thank you for having me. I've looked forward to this conversation. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so and much. I'm happy that I'm doing something else with you apart from listening to your music. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh. So, um, back to um, our discussion for today. Yes. Why sex? Why this theme? Oh, before I, I, um, I answer that one, I think we should cover something that you, at the beginning, you ask um, parents to excuse their children. <laughs> Let the children stay. Okay. Because quite often, we as parents underestimate what the children know or what they've heard. Mm. Except that um, they do not receive the right information because they are picking from their peers, okay. from social media mm. and that kind of thing. So I have always advocated that whenever parents are in a place where, especially on a platform like this, where we are not going to get vulgar, Mm -hmm. we're not going to get profane, That's right. then it is good for the children to be there. Then they, at least they would ask parents questions. Okay. And parents will have the chance to That's give right. them the sex education that um, many of us wish we had had when we were, we were children. children um, yeah. I mean, if, um, if Mr. Newman had had that kind of education, <laughs> he would have been grooming himself much better than That's he was <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, why sex? Mm. Why not sex? Um, we often don't acknowledge it, but we are sexual beings. That's right. No matter what somebody has accomplished. Indeed, if you look at the main driver for human accomplishment, is sex. Mm. The school people are going to, it is not always to land a good job or to land a good job for his own sake, to land a good job so they will be more attractive to get the kind of partner they want. They want. Mm. Car, why are we buying a certain car? It's all because of our sexuality. And so we are sexual beings. It's the a, it's a thing that defines us um, as human, 
human beings. And then, marriage is also a sexual institution. We say it's an institution established by God. God. Mm. Yes, that is true, but it is an institution established by God and it, for sexual pleasure and for all that sex can give us. So, in t it is, but, and yet it is the one subject we all run away from. We run away from because we are not comfortable about it. Yeah. We run away from because society makes us even ashamed to talk, to about, talk about, it. about it. We run away from it because maybe our experiences in the back in the past makes us associate ourselves it sex with whatever mm. uh, is vulgar, whatever is ungodly, mm. and things like that. So much so that we fail to remember that sex is God's idea. Yeah. There are Christians who hear that and say, no, 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 it can't be. No, sex is God's idea. And that is why those who say that the apple that, um, Eve. that Satan gave Eve mm. was sex, I tell them, you're ignorant. You don't know, you don't even understand the wisdom of God and the goodness of God. Mm. Sex was part of the reason why God said it's not good enough. It is not good for a man to be to alone. Be alone. It wasn't the devil who told God, God said that it is not good enough for a man to be alone. It is God himself who realized, no, I've just created a sexual being. I haven't given him a sexual partner. So let me create that. It is not good for man to be alone. So if we can put all that together, one, sex is God's idea. Two, we are sexual beings. Marriage is a sexual institution. Mm -hmm. um, at the very basic, um, it is a sexual institution. Then we would understand that we should talk about sex a little bit more. Now, at the beginning of the book, in, in the beginning of the book, you talked about your experience. My, my shameful experience. <laughs> and I thought to myself, what? You are being, you are being diplomatic. <laughs> you don't want to say. <laughs> you know, um, I, it's, it's just it's good to share. Yes. Because I'm, I'm sure uh, most people have, you know, such experiences. Yes. And so it is, it is good to share. But tell us about it. Um, that experience that led you to meeting this missionary yeah. who then uh, gave you the education you needed That's and right. all of that, yeah. Well, um, if you are watching us and you haven't read the book, um, Vicky is referring to chapter one of Let's Talk About Sex. That's the way I began the book. Yes. And Vicky, I began the book that way because I wanted people to understand that I was not speaking as from a position of superiority. And know it all. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm speaking from the position of somebody who has had to explore and who, by the message of God, had come upon some information that helped him mm. in his own quest to honor God sexually. That's right. Um, because we do not realize that if you do not satisfy your partner, you are not honoring God. When, when we talk about godliness, mm. we don't think about that. Mm. Because he made us... Um, sexual being. So if you are not um, meeting the sexual needs of your partner, you are really not glorifying God at all. Um, but by God's grace, even though I started from nothing, I, I am the first of five boys. Okay. Um, so never really interacted with any woman really my age. It was my mother, my aunties. They okay. lived in a world of their own. I lived in a world of my own. Okay. Um, and so... At the time I married, I didn't know anything about the anat anatomy of a woman. Okay. You know, I, I was clueless. But I had assumed, I know, I would know. I had assumed that, what can be so it's hard about day, this? Yeah. After all, all these silly boys are around <laughs> and doing it. I should be able to do it. And then comes a day and disaster. Disaster again. I... The way God deals with me, whenever I need something, God puts a book in my hand. Wow. Whenever I need guidance, because I've never been the kind of person who has been guided or counseled by people. You know, the first of five boys, you are the, you are the, the first boy, they look to you, you have nobody coming to you with their problems. Yeah. Raised by an illiterate mother uh, who did not understand the world I, she had born me into. Okay. And so it, you quickly learn that she cannot even relate to this, to this world. Um, and then wherever I went, because of my 
very introvert nature. Um, people also assume certain things about you. If you are an introvert, people are the sort of children who um, is so friendly yeah. and that kind of thing. So they let you be. Mm. Um, they let you be. At the same time, you also can break and go, and go and approach them. So whatever issues you have, you you, you deal and wrestle with it mm. yourself. And but from from my adolescence, I realized that what the Lord did is that any time I needed some counsel, I'll get someone who put a book in my hand to read. And in this case, just before my wedding, a colleague of mine in the office mm. gave me a book, okay. The Art of Marriage. I said, well, you may need this. And um, for some reason, I carried the book along. To, for your honeymoon? To the honeymoon. Okay. For the rest, read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Get a book. <laughs> but, I, I, but God has been merciful. God, and even that meeting that missionary mm. um, from church who stopped and um, spent that time with Florence and I, I think that was a game changer. And again, that was nothing but God, you know, intervening at the appropriate times in my life. It is the Writer's Blog Talk Show here on this channel. We are speaking with James Abel White. Uh, we popularly call him Uncle Ebo. Uh, we are talking from his book, Let's Talk About Sex. I like um, the subtitle there, Becoming One. Mm. Now, um, Uncle Ebo, really, like you said, at the tender age now, in yes. our current dispensation, young, 14, 13, 16, they know yes. about, they seem to have more information uh, you know about it as to whether it is correct as to as yeah. whether it is appropriate um, and all of that you know so um, even be be before we move to the next chapters what do you think um, has been the issue is it a cultural issue is it how has it been um, um, for us not to be able to freely and openly talk about the subject sex because um, for instance, I have a, an 11-year-old um, daughter who comes to me and says, Mommy, is it, is it okay to have a tall man? My husband is tall. So as soon as she says that, I'm like, yeah, why? She says, because I would like to marry a tall man when I grow up Sunday. Yeah. So that was an opportunity for me to sit her down, talk to her about the fact that, yeah, maybe I don't know what God has in store mm. for you. God may, may, may bring you a short man. So whatever it is. But if that atmosphere is not created, we are not able to really, truly yeah. talk about the subject sex. Don't worry, your, your daughter will marry a tall man. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Okay. Daughters marry their fathers. Okay. Or their father's kind. kind. Okay. Sons marry their, their mother's, mother's kind. kind. Quite often we are not even aware, no, mo most of the time we are not even aware why we were attracted to this person. Mm. You know. Um, if it is not the height, there will be a quality of the father in that I person, really in whoever she settles, she settles down with. Um, and so that, that is always wonderful when, if you have a wonderful parent, if you have wonderful parents. Because nature being what it is, nature does not make you pick only the positive side. Yeah. You may pick some side of your father that you were not even happy with and yet so you perpetuate the cycle mm. or you may be led to pick the right choice um, but why do we not talk about sex ignorance misunderstanding of what it is um, and so and also the power of it the blessedness of it and so it is the first thing the enemy tar targets in creation mm. The, the, if, the, if the enemy wants to destroy anyone, this is the easiest area to use. Okay. Um, careers are destroyed by this, by sex. Um, even destinies are destroyed by this. David's own legacy was tainted because of it. by this mm. you know so it's a very powerful tool and quite often because we 
we do not understand that this is even God given, then we don't even go to him for the wisdom and for the grace to make it work for us. And so we have evidence of what this has done. Okay. And so if we are raising any child, is be careful of this. It's be careful of this because we've seen the evidence of what damage it, it could cause. create. Mm. Except that in talking about that, we don't talk about the blessedness of it. We think, we think that that one, mm. you know, so the, the first task of anybody growing up, as I have come to understand, is unlearn whatever you were taught as a child. Okay. And relearn. Okay. Because a lot of the things they taught you as a child were only to keep you out of trouble, trouble in quotes, because they didn't think you would have the, the sense, um, the maturity to handle even the blessing. Okay. So, hey, stay away from it. Mm. Stay away from it. It's like we telling our children, stay away from the fire. Stay away from the fire. Stay away from the fire. Um, meanwhile, mommy is cooking with fire. Yeah. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. But stay away from the fire. Stay away from the fire. Because we think, as a child, you may not have the judgment to handle this fire right. And in the end, you may end up burning yourself. So we'll rather protect you. But we're also hoping that as you grow, you understand the fire, the problem is not with the fire. The problem is with the fact that mm -hmm. you may not know how to handle I'm the done. fire. That's right. So let's play safe. Don't get, don't close, get to close to the fire. You know, um, lest it, it causes more harm than good. And we've done that with, with sex um, a lot. And especially among Christians. The, when I was growing up, Christians knew only three sins. Three of all the sins in the Bible. <laughs> okay. We, there were only three sins. And even now, I'm sure that people listening to us, especially those of my age, will not understand that the church, every sermon they heard against what it means to be a good Christian, what you should stay away from, was on the three. Sex or fornication, mm -hmm. drinking, smoking. I've been trying to see smoke in the Bible. <laughs> but those were the big things. Mm. Gossip, no. We, we didn't have time to talk about gossip. Mm. Envy, no. We didn't have time to talk about But sex, fornication, hey, that one, uh, a lot of pastors made joy in that, and they would frighten you. And I remember when I was growing up, there was this, somebody came up with a vision of what happens to those who have engaged themselves in immorality in the hereafter, and what is done to them, and things like that. Oh, <laughs> No, um, chill. The point is that this is of God. This is of God. It has its place. Mm. Um, if you do not understand the wisdom of God and use it as God intended it, like anything else, a car, if you do not understand what it is to handle a car and the safety, how you could drive safely and protect everybody, and you think that all you have to do is floor the accelerator because mm. you can floor it even if you are in a cab. Or there's a car before you and you are being overtaken and you don't care about That's the fact that the there's another car that is coming on the opposite. A car can mess you up badly. Yeah. Yeah. An airplane can mess you up badly. Yeah. Does it mean they are bad? No, they are mm. not. You, you understand me? So it is a sex is of God, uh, it was made of God, created of God, and there's nothing to be ashamed about it, but mess up with it too, and uh, the, you understand how powerful it is. That's right, so it's sex is not bad, God ordained, it is spiritual, we'll get to know about that uh, after this break. You remember, we are here at La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, and I'm with Uncle Ebo White. We're discussing from his book, Let's Talk About Sex. 
There are many who have gone to their graves with untold stories. Stories meant to change and transform lives. Don't let that happen to you. If a story isn't you, it has to come out. It must be told. Do you have an idea or a life-transforming story to share? Do you want to write a book but don't know how? Let the expert writers at Reveal Multimedia help you out. Are you a preacher with a desire to convert your sermons into books and other readable materials? Reveal Multimedia offers efficient and on-time audio to text transcription services at a very affordable price. We also transcribe interviews, documentaries, etc. We offer other editorial services such as editing and proofreading. That's not all. At Review, the author and his or her book are our priority. We are the brain behind the writer's blog, a book review program which airs on Sunny FM and Sunny TV, meant to celebrate authors and their works as well as promote other stakeholders in the publishing industry. We offer PR services for authors with top-notch publicists who create Create thrilling stories, book reviews and commentaries, organize book launches and related events to provide mileage on all meaningful media platforms for the author and their works. Call on us today to help bring every creative idea to life. For more information, call, text or send a WhatsApp message to 0552 535 036 or 0208 428 322. Send us an email, reveal gh at gmail.com. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Reveal Multimedia GH. Our website is www.revealmultimediagh.com. Reveal Multimedia. Dreams come alive. Say I love you. Create memories worth repeating this Valentine's Day by treating your heart to a special three-course meal facing the Atlantic Ocean. La Pan Royal Beach Hotel invites you to a special pungent moment with your love as we treat you with delectable cuisine. From Friday, 11 February to Tuesday, 15 February 2022. Room rate, double occupancy, $140. Single occupancy, $115. Date, 14th February 2022. Dinner, venue, Ocean View Ghanaian Village Restaurant. Rate, 390 per couple and 230 for single. Time, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. There is complimentary house wine and lots of gifts available. For reservations and inquiry, please call 0302-215-100 or 0577-665-964. La Palma Royal Beach Hotel, uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. Welcome back. It's the Writer's Vlog Talk Show right here on this channel. We're coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. I am uh, looking this beautiful thanks to Cody's Beauty and Fashion GH. Thank you uh, for always uh, making me look sweet um, on the show. Well, my producer said never to say delicious. And so uh, you can find Cody's Beauty and uh, Makeover at Second Link Chapel Square, Sakomono. Give them a call on the numbers on your screen now and they'll make sure you're looking good. Today, I have with me here, Uncle Ebo White, we're discussing from his book, Let's Talk About Sex, Becoming One. Now, Uncle Ebo, when we posted this on our broadcast list, mm -hmm. we had a few questions coming in. Okay. And uh, since we will be talking about some elements that has to do with sex, I mean, what really comes about, uh, what comes to play when sex is at work. He says, I thank God for this subject, for discussion today. I am a woman who loves sex. However, I do not have that ecstasy with my husband. Once he reaches orgasm, he's completely done. Uh -huh. How do I communicate to him Kusho, that Kusho, I also Kusho. desire to reach orgasm with him? Kusho, Kusho. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm not making light of the issue. Um, it's just that Vicky, that question could be asked by 80% of married women. Hmm. Um, and they could ask that question because we haven't been educated enough about sex, both, both men and, and women, that we, we focus only on the mechanics hmm. and not on anything else. else. We do not focus on our partner. So, I am honey, I have an erection, I want satisfaction, I want gratification. I have a wife, she owes it to me mm. to gratify 
to allow me to use her for my gratification. Okay. As to her need in this matter does not concern me. Um, and so I come in, do what I have to do. Do not even understand or have not taken the trouble to understand her anatomy, her nature, okay. and how this works for her. And so I am not working, I'm not cooperating with her. I'm not working with the requirements of her body. Okay. I am just using the body, hmm. her body, and not relating to her yeah. as a sexual being. Okay. Um, so because of that, I'm a man, I get, I get an erection, I'm ready to go. I'm aroused. As soon as I have an erection, and that's why I, I like to say that men tend to move in the direction of their erection. So wherever direction <laughs> Points. Oh my! <laughs> uh, we we move there, and then so if it points towards my wife, I'm going there. Okay. Um, if it points towards my secretary, I'm going there. Um, that kind of thing. Um, again, we haven't quite learned how to harness this and use it. Mm. The basic problem here is that couples don't even talk on sex. So the sexual encounter does not meet my expectations, does not satisfy me, but I can't talk about, about it. it. I can't talk about it because in talking about it, I may seem like a bad girl. My husband may think I'm a say. Mm. And in ask, if I have to ask him to do it in some way that would help, then the question arises, how did you know that? that. Yeah. Who taught you that? Yeah. You know, and so because of that, keep it back in. Um, and then w over time, what happens is that the woman then loses interest in this because it is not just that she doesn't reach her climax. When a woman doesn't reach her climax, her whole system is messed up. Mm. It, is, it is physically uncomfortable. Emotionally, it's a total mess and things like that. So, mm. uh, she wakes up watching the man feeling free and is angry. You are the reason why I'm not bright this morning. Mm. Because the answer way you went to me, Anya. <laughs> you have no clue. Um, a lot of men do not understand that. Yes, I am ready for sex, but my wife may be far, far away from being ready from for being sex. Ready. That I need to prepare her. I need to prepare her with actions. Okay. Um, I need to prepare her with words. I need to prepare her with some kind of sweetness. You know, to, so there, there are cases where there's been no communication between husband and wife, but the man has made up his mind and said, You bring SAC. <laughs> you know, because maybe on the way home he saw something that quite suddenly made Kojo Mensa stand at attention, and then okay. so he promised Kojo Mensa that this night is you know, don't worry, could you, could you, we satisfy you um, this night. Mm. But he gets home, he, had, he, he just goes there, um, goes to the horse, sits there, he's watching television, food is given to him, he eats. But all the time he says in mind, today is going to happen. He's not even talking to the woman. Then he gets up and goes to bed, mm. waiting for the woman to come. Yeah. Now, He's not even helping with the household chores. So the woman who also, if it is somebody like Vicky, who also holds a regular job, um, has also come home tired from her work as well. Mm -hmm. But in her case, gets home and has to prepare the supper. Has to take care of the children. Make sure the children uh, have taken their bath, they have eaten, they are doing their homework. And if they are younger children, even controlling them and getting them out of out yeah. of harm's way yeah it's a full-time full job. job and men don't don't realize how much energy children can sap out of a woman hmm. you know stop it stop it hey, where are you where is it <laughs> you know, meanwhile at the same time you have something on fire hmm. and if you have more than one and children sometimes you can think that it seems like demons have possessed <laughs> them to mess <laughs> <laughs> to myself hmm. you know because yeah. way way no then way. way then you are told between the two 
Now she goes through all this. Remember, the husband hasn't emotionally connected, connected. with her. Okay. Then she comes, and the last thing she's thinking of is sex. She just, she's come into the bedroom hoping, okay, the children are asleep now. Mm -hmm. She hears, oh, now I can get some rest. I can sleep. And then suddenly. Mm. Because he, remember, he's been looking forward to this. Stuff, but okay. I said that he hasn't dropped any, any hands. Mm. Then he tries to make the move. And, um, and then the woman is not that responsive. And in his mind, my wife is denying me. My wife does not love me. Mm. My wife is not invested in this marriage. Mm -hmm. And then, now, instead of even talking about it, he is responding with anger. So, yeah. Uncle Lebo, what, then, what does it take then? What, what, what must I do as a female, what must I do as a male to prepare my partner, you know, so we can have good sex? It should be what she did do to prepare you instead of what she did uh, do to prepare him. I think that in a case like this, like the scenario I've, gi I've yeah. given, mm -hmm. pay for us is it may be, mm. let the woman give him what he wants and then speak to him later. I said, could you, I enjoyed the time we spent. Okay. But I wish he said, we could, we could do, we could try this way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but men, men don't take those conversations lightly because what are you trying to tell me? Sir, I, I don't know sex. Yeah. That I am not good, mm. you know, because for us, once the erection is firm and I have penetrated and I have ejaculated, that's it. That's sex. Mm. We all need to learn, and I wish that a lot more men would be humble um, to to learn, because really, what it takes to prepare a woman very little. And I like the fact that she said I love sex. The truth is that. Any woman who says, I don't love sex, I don't like sex, is lying. What she's saying is, that I, is that I have not had a good experience with sex. Okay. Not that I don't like sex. Okay. Every woman, the emotional state makeup of a woman is like that. Every woman loves mm. sex. Mm. But it must be sex for her, not just for the man. The man, sex for, for me, for a man, the average man, for... Um, all the gen gentlemen uh, watching us right now, sex is most 10 minutes to cry also for a man. Mm. 10 minutes, the woman is just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? Me mm. And then like the woman said, turns over and is sleeping. Yeah. And of course, yes, I understand that, that once a man ejaculates, um, all he wants to do is to turn over and sleep because he's achieved his, um, his um, ambition, his goal. Mm. So he's done. Now he remembers that, okay, I'm tired. Let me sleep. And of course, ejaculation will make you um, um, tired as well, make you, make you drowsy as well. Uh, but if the man would understand that the woman's body, it's not just the woman, the body needs to be prepared. prepared. Needs to, she needs to be brought to the point where she is lubricated. Um, she needs to be brought to the point where she is yearning and desiring for this. Mm. And those ones, there are steps to do to take those steps, um, to do. But a lot of men have never been trained about it. They've never heard this yeah. um, told them, and so they don't think it even exists. And so, um, for all these details uh, that Uncle is speaking about, once you get a copy of this book. Uh, you're going to learn more about foreplay and the afterglow. We yes. Have that one, the afterglow. Every woman yearns for that yeah. one. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about and, it in a bit. And every man feel, most men feel in that. Yes. Most men have no time for afterglow. Almost. They don't even know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, for this particular uh, uh, page, 49, that's chapter 4, you said good sex is like a good story or a great novel. Yeah, it has a beginning. It has a beginning. A middle mm. and an end. And an end. Yes. So we've talked about the beginning. Yes. Preparing the woman. The woman. Preparing the woman with mm. acts. Preparing mm. the woman. Even helping the woman in the kitchen could be part of the preparing. Mm. Even standing by her as she's cooking and chatting with her mm. could be part of the, because women want to bond. They want to bond with their men. Mm. Um, um, could be part, helping out with the children, taking the children so they don't disturb mommy, um, could be um, part 
part, part of, of it. And telling her what you appreciate about her could be part of it. Mm. Um, telling her you've mi you missed her during the day um, could be part of it. Um, bringing home a little gift <coughs> could be part of it. It doesn't have to be expensive. Women appreciate very, very little yeah, things. And, and unfortunately, men too, if it, doesn't, if it is not expensive, we don't think it is necessary. Okay. Say, so I bring you a flower. Because if you give me a, give me a flower, I'm not it. <laughs> so I can't see how it would mean anything it's to you. To you, okay. And yet for a woman, oh, it means a lot. Uh, but we, we need to learn. I think we need to learn to be men. Mm. I.e., not just being strong, but being tender. Not just being strong, but being tender. Being tender. And being tender. Um, let, let, let's go to the next question um, here. My husband is a pastor and has very little time for foreplay. He seems not to care about my feelings. Once he wants it and he gets it, he's completely okay. Don't get me wrong. He is an amazing husband and a man of God, but our sex life is slowly becoming less of a priority in this marriage. What do I do? So, Mami, I can tell you that you just spoke, spoke in the pain of... Um, in this case, I can say 90% of us of money. Pastors fail here a lot because of our, we, we spiritualize things mm. and we do not see any spirituality in this. Mm. We do not realize that our first, our first field of ministry is my wife, my marital bed. That is my ministry. Mm. The first area in which I must honor God is how well I live with my wife and satisfy her in bed. Wow. We don't know that. Mm. So as long as I'm standing on the pulpit and the Lord is using me and, ble and blessing people and um, mean, um, turning, changing lives, mm. I'm fine. I'm a man of God. But let's learn a new thing. A man of God begins from home. If the people closest to you cannot testify that you are, a, you are a man or a woman of God, you fail God. Do you understand? If the people who know you the most mm. cannot testify of God's grace upon you, mm. then you are not quite honoring God. And your wife must be able to testify. And that is why I tell people that whenever I go to any church, to understand what kind of man the pastor is, I look for where the wife is sitting and look at her face as the man is preaching. Then you know. <laughs> Especially when she doesn't think that anybody is looking at her. Because her some women, just... some women, most women can't hide their feelings. Yeah. A lot of, as of mommy, they put up a certain face and keep it throughout the, the service. Do you understand? Yes. It's, it's a non, um, they just, they just put it there and then so they put up they set up the face and leave they are not in the church <laughs> but every now and then uh, the man says something yeah and then you know oh, brother you, you're, not doing, wrong. you're not doing well so um but it's a big i am not mocking anybody i am the way we were trained about spirituality it made spirituality an enemy of sexuality Hmm. that if anybody tried to speak with this pastor, the kind of tongues and the binding and loosening he would do on you <laughs> um, would amaze you. And yet, here it is. If you don't have time for poor play, what, what do you have time for? Because the problem with a man not having time for poor play is that he will ejaculate early. Um, what people don't, men don't appreciate is that the foreplay helps you to last longer. It makes your erections firmer. Okay. And it will help you to last longer. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen is that if all you did is, I have an erection, where's my wife? Okay, um, I am going to have action. What will happen is that one day, one day, you may, you may be like a footballer, like a blaster um, player who gets injured whilst warming up for the match <laughs> okay again um, those who are mature <laughs> interpret that <laughs> you know just when 
you are about to get things are about to get easy um serious then before you realize you ejaculated and for most men when they ejaculate they need a lot more time to get back into it again mm. Mm. and so so he's like a player who just got injured during warming up for the match so what what should she do what should she do yeah very little um there isn't very lit much she can do um but whenever he's in a good mood let let them let her talk about it okay but w always watch his mood okay. and drop it kakra okay um and and see what his reaction is and then talk some more otherwise what you're going to do is that he's going to label you as a devil as a demon who is trying to Take his anointing away. What he doesn't realize is that you're just helping helping him to be the best that he can be as a man of God. Thank you for staying with us here on the Writer's Blog Talk Show right here on this channel. Remember, we're coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, and there's a love season. So if you're looking for that serene environment to spend some quality time with your special someone, make sure you're coming here. Uh, delicious food, a uh, very beautiful environment just for the two of you number on your screen now go ahead call and make your reservations remember we are also uh, supported by holy ever after Akko books audio uh, which is ghana's first premier publisher and digital distributor of black and african audiobooks now they provide publishers and writers with a platform to transform their books into digital audio consumable products uh, and reach as many people as possible you can just visit their online uh, you know platform www.app.acobooks.net and make sure you're signing on they have a variety of audiobooks for those of you who struggle with hard copy books this is an option call, uh, for you call them today 0202-040-176 Ako Books Audio giving voice uh, to global African authors let's go for TWB Nuggets right now with Baba Okra. This is TWB Nugget. Hello and welcome to TWB Nugget. Some weeks back, we have been looking at proper book care methods to ensure our books last longer. Today, I will be sharing with you how you can cultivate proper reading habits. Our first tip is change your mindset. <laughs> I believe the key to cultivating a good reading habit is to stop thinking of it as some tedious activity. Now, I'm at fault with that. I didn't like reading because I thought it was such hard work. Until I came to realize the reading must become a natural phenomenon. Just as you eat, drink, sleep, breathe, work out, etc. Reading must become part of your daily living. That way, you will learn to enjoy it and benefit from it as well. So, go and read that book, article, blog that you keep skipping. <laughs> and that is our tip for today. Tune in next week for yet another key tip on how to cultivate proper reading habit. I'm Babo Kran. Bye for now. <laughs>
Vicky, she's been so amazing. She's been able to find a niche for us Christian parents who are just looking for ways to empower and encourage our children. Seeing kids, parents, teachers coming together to talk about books, to talk about reading. I believe that the little ones who came around today have um, learnt a lot. It was amazing and I love the part of the kids where you could colour, you could build houses out of blocks, make whatever you want. It's a kind of a marketplace where we brought together both writers to think through and relate to the value of reading. Today has been awesome. We've been able to introduce more people to the awesome work that Janelle has done. The two books were nicely patronized and we thank you. Coming face to face and joining many authors who have written amazing inspirational books was an exciting one for me. Also, the active involvement of children, especially at a young age, is a good turning point, especially for this particular program. With God's help, it's going to get better and bigger. Great job, Bryce's blog, and we wish you all the best. If you want to be part of our book club, or you want your child to be part of our kiddie reading sessions, send us a text or WhatsApp message with the word book club to 055-253-5036 or 020-842-8322. And that is a wonderful tip for you, Baba. Thank you so much for that one. We are here with Uncle Ebu White. We are discussing from his book, Let's Talk About Sex, something that, you know, rarely uh, we talk about, but it is very important. And there are so many nuggets in here that you must get a copy and make sure you are, uh, you know, learn as much as you can for the future and even for the now. Uncle Ebu, um, this is another question from um, someone. It says, okay. my partner is not romantic at all. She is more concerned about how our home is looking, kitchen duties and the children, etc. She doesn't see the need to spice up our sex life. She will lay a romantic bed all right with nice scented perfumes and all that, but doesn't really care about, for example, what she's wearing for the night or even what to do for the night. She would just be ready for me anytime, and that is not enough for me. She's an amazing wife and mother. How can I help her to understand my dilemma? I think let's begin by letting this man know that he is blessed to have a woman like that, you know, um, because this is a woman who is dutiful. Okay. Doing yeah. what is expected Must of be her. Done. Mm. This is a woman who, as she says, is a fantastic homemaker. Um, this is a woman who is not denying him. Um, so let him talk with, with her and let him, together with her, go on this sexual journey of discovery and of doing more because it depends on how she has been raised and what she's been taught. Okay. So there are things she will need to unlearn but it's not easy to unlearn these things. So, and he should be patient with her. Okay. And he should never compare her with anybody. You know, uh, because when he's implicit in what she, his, his complaint, it's possible he's had some sexual experiences before, either before they married or something. Okay. And so in his mind, he's comparing a certain fa fantasy with the reality, the reality he's he having and no i want something okay. uh, but whatever it is um talk with her it will amaze you once your wife knows what makes you happy how well because she is capable of doing that she has that a woman who lays a scented romantic bed and then let her know that well what you wear also um helps me hmm. um to be in the mood, so something a little sexy, a, bit, a little bit more revealing in the bedroom, hmm. a little bit of scent, um, scented, the same, and things like that would help. Let, but he must, he must thank God for the woman he has. He has a good, stable woman. Let him now turn her into the sex, the tigress she could be in bed. Okay. Because it's there. It's there. there. It's there. Is there? Is hidden? Yeah, is there? Is there? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's uh, really interesting. Uh, this book is very, very powerful, resourceful indeed. Now, it amuses me how you link the vagina to the heart. Yes. Uh, and this is page fifty-four. You said the man who has allowed himself to be instructed knows 
that the way to the vagina is through the heart mm -hmm. and the mind. Explain That's that. the paradox of life. And sometimes when I look at life, I, I tend to say that God has a sense of humor. Because some of the things God created and how he counterbalanced them is interesting. Hmm. The way to my heart as a man is through my sexual organ. Okay. Give me... Satisfy could you mess and I like you. Do you understand me? Then that is when you can say, uh, It's not a surface kind of, it's not like um, a camouflage. Is no, that it's not, not. Okay. Um, because when, when you've satisfied me, I am prepared to do everything for you mm. so you could sat continue satisfying me. Mm. Whereas with the woman, it's the other way around. Show me that you care. Okay. So I can give you my body. Yeah. But show me that you care. Then I can willingly um, open up to you. Um, and again, that is something we all need to learn. We all need to learn. It doesn't come naturally. Hmm. Um, we all need to learn it. And I hope we we'll start learning. Beautiful indeed. Let me just run by you some uh, of the chapters right here in this book as we conclude um, in just a bit. We have, uh, of course, Uncle Abu sharing from uh, his personal life, the place yeah. of sex in marriage, you and sex, intimacy and romance. We've talked about foreplay, just a little bit details in here, the sexual act itself, the afterglow, uh, which we'll talk about in just a bit. I think that's what we'll round up with. Uh, you also need to know what men need to understand about women and sex, what women need to understand about men and sex, uh, and a few others, of course, some frequently uh, asked or heard complaints about sex. Uncle Lebo, um, for a couple um, or a woman that needs her man to still somewhat stay alive after sex, and, and that is the afterglow it is. In mm. fact, explain to us and how it works, actually. The, that is something that we men mm. all have to learn because uh, the natural thing as i've said I, I said at one point is that roll over and sleep because where we this mm. is what you, you wanted yeah. when you um, sleep but for the woman after the sexual encounter she needs to feel that this meant more to you than just a physical thing yeah that it wasn't just sex, me. I meant a little more to you. Okay. And that is what Afterglow does. It, it, tells me, it tells a woman that she did not give herself to somebody who just wanted to gratify his sexual needs, mm. but somebody who cares about her. Not about sex, but about her mm. as a person. And it's simple. Hold there. Um, half of the time, she would want to talk. So get her to talk. Um, <laughs> let her talk in your arms and things like that. Um, let her know you value this time. This time is good. Um, you enjoy this. It helps her to feel good about it. But if you do after grow right, this is a secret. Hmm. If you do it right, it becomes the beginning of the foreplay for the next encounter. Because then if the foreplay for glow, um, after glow experience is good enough, then I'm looking forward to the next, next one. one. Because human beings have additive natures. So if, if this it gave me this feeling, I want to do it again mm. and again and again and again. So if allowing him to have sex gave me this tender moment with him and I appreciate that tender moment, then oh, let me give him. Yeah. This again, because I want the tender moment. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it will help both of you to enrich your relationship. And I also say that as soon after the um, sexual encounter as possible, do some kind thing for the woman. Such as? Run the bath for her the next morning. For the couples who think that all God approves, the only sex God approves of is that sex in the night. <laughs> With the lights off. With the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> With the lights off. 
then early in the morning, um, do something for her. Either iron some her dress, ask okay. her, what are you wearing? Okay. Do I expect a simple answer because she wouldn't know. So you take about three options and iron all of them. She would make a choice. Run a bath for her. Mm. will be fine. Um, when you have a bit of time, like a holiday or a Saturday morning and you don't have any place to go immediately, um, taking over the breakfast preparation will be fine. I can't see any woman who will not thank God to have breakfast in bed once in a while. Once in you a know. while. It's not bad. Not that bad. My dear, <laughs> I t t sit up, sit up. I'll prepare something for you. <laughs> who knows? You may be rewarded with a round two as well. <laughs> You know, so, so if we are flipping the coin now for the man, yes. um, is there something like that for the female to do for him? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hey, let us know I'm um, King Kong. Even, even when maybe it didn't go well. Aspirational. <laughs> ah. Aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you seen parents who call their children um, doctor? I can't even use mm, crash. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm not a doctor. Oh, doctor Nye. And everybody calls him doctor. Aspirational. So we know how to do aspiration. Okay. So let's do aspirational here. Um, and then, because you see, whatever a man gets praised for, he begins to look for ways of doing it better. Okay. Whatever a man gets condemned for or criticized for, he doesn't bother. Mm. Mm. So if you roll your eyes and you make me, give me by your body language that you do enjoy it, with time, I may even go off it. Because I'm not getting pray. You grow up and show. You know, <laughs> they will do more. So, <laughs> and, and it is incorporated in our culture. Yeah. Have you seen the titles we give our chiefs? I'm not going to mention any, but hmm. we give them these huge, like, them accomplished one, the mm. powerful one, mm. the all-knowing one, mm. the all-wise one. Mm. No and wait, mm. when you give it to us, because we are men, we don't tell, no, no, you know who. No, we take it. We, <laughs> and then after that, we carry ourselves accordingly. Okay. That, oh, Vicky respects me a lot. Let me make her respect me more. Mm. As against Vicky, let me back Okay, no, let me back but Vicky respects me. Then every time I'm approaching Vicky, I have that in mind. Vicky mm -hmm. respects me. Mm -hmm. So even when she provokes me, my reaction is different because no, get no, get no. She she holds me in very high regard. Mm -hmm. Able to, to don't you know? Aspirational. So um, I enjoy just say I enjoy being with you. I enjoy these times with you. Oh, Niti. <laughs> yeah, and then he will Beautiful do more. Indeed. Oh, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. That's the way we were made um, by, God. by God. So <laughs> let it be. So This is an amazing book. Uh, everyone watching us right now or listening to us, uh, you must get a copy for yourself. How much is it going for, Uncle Ibu? Um, for 100 um, CDs in the shops. Okay. Um, and you'll get it at Challenge um, Bookshop. Um, but every... Sh um, shell shop like airport and then bachelor total okay and places like that um you get in the you go to the bookshelf bookshops you find you find copy there Riskful oh, and, and then also it's Riskful on amazon so if you also it's online go on, on amazon you'll okay get it. all right uncle Lebo, thank you so much but your very last words um anything you may want to say concerning the subject around the subject um that is your camera please uh, advise us, talk to us. I do not want anyone to feel put down when we talk about this and when we talk about the way we feel. We feel. I want people to understand that me, the person talking, um, I've come a long way. I began with zero. Hmm. We can learn to be do better. Let's do that. Let's, do th let's have this understanding that sex is God's idea and honoring and um, fulfilling our wives is our godly duty. And if we can get that one, and fulfilling our husbands, God, our godly duty, if we do that, then our worship of God will be complete. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Uncle Lebu. Welcome, uh, and thanks um, for having me. For coming when we called on you. And that's it for you for today. Sex is God's idea.
and if you're getting it right, satisfying your husband, uh, satisfying your wife, your partner, uh, you are fulfilling God's purpose. And I'm so excited about that. Sex is spiritual. Get a copy of Uncle Ebo's book um, on your screen now, number to call and places you can get it from. This has been the Writer's Blog Talk Show with me here, Vicky Amwa. We are back next week, God willing, with another exciting edition. Remember, we came to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. This program is powered by Review Multimedia and supported by Holy Ever After, Brad Advertising, and Yedu, Echo Books Audio, uh, Challenge Enterprises of Ghana, of course, Cody's Fashion and Beauty GH. I'm so excited also supporting uh, us media-wise is Sunny FM and Sunny TV. I'm Vicky Amwa. Remember, the writer's blog, read, write, indulge your mind. Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading, but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes these books talk about. Every week, I speak to various authors who are behind life-transforming books, as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on the station this and every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Thank you for watching The Writer's Blog on this channel. If you want to sponsor, partner, advertise or have your book reviewed on the show, call or send a text or WhatsApp message to or send an email to follow us on social media. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia. Join us next week for another exciting edition. The Writer's Blog. Read, write, 